Good morning, everybody. If you have your Bible, stand with me, would please, for the reading of God's Word, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. It'll also be on the screen. I'm reading from a teaching from the Holman Standard. If you have the King James or a different translation, the word will be just a little bit different, but we'll all end up in the same place together. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. You should know this. This, If you've gotten a Bible from me, this should be written on the inside of your Bible. This is my life verse. This is the verse of my, has been my life verse as long as I can remember that I try to guard, uh, guide my life by. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean or rely on your own understanding. Think about Him in all your ways. I like uh, uh, the NIV says, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will guide or direct your, your paths. This says He will guide you on the right path. Do not consider yourself to be wise. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Let's pray together. Father, speak to our hearts this morning. Give us the courage to trust you today like never before. Help us to really put to practice what we claim that we say, that we trust you. It's different between saying it and actually doing it. So Father, help us to see the difference this morning. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Turn me up just a little bit more. You may be seated. If I were to ask the question, how many of you all, tr how many do you, how many of you would say that you trust God? I trust God. But if we were to take an evaluation of our lives and be really honest about it, how much do we really, our lives really look like we trust God? Do we say things uh, like this? Oh Lord, I, I tell you that they, uh, I went to the doctor, called me, and said I had something going on, and I worried to death. Anybody ever say that? You know, you get a bill in and, and, and you don't know what you're going to do. Lord, I don't know how we're going to make this one. I don't know how we're going to pay this bill. You hear a, a negative report on your job that maybe they're going to cut out the job or maybe they're going to be layoffs and fear sets in. And Lord, I don't know what, what, what I'll do if they let me go. I don't know how we'll make it. And so we say we trust God, but then there's the practical side of that. Do we actually practice what we say we do? And so sometimes we, if we're not careful, here's the deal, folks. When we get born again, we have to learn a whole new way of living, a whole new system. We've been raised a certain way before you were born again. You were raised to believe what you believe by the influences that have been around you. And so probably if, if we use the natural ideal of things, if you're a Democrat or a Republican, you're probably that way because that's the way grandma and grandpa was and you were raised and taught that way. If you were a Baptist or a Methodist or a Pentecostal, probably the truth of the matter is you had some influences from your family uh, about how what kind of uh, church denomination you went to. If you uh, believe a certain way about things, a lot of it has to do with your upbringing and how you were taught. Some of you spend money like it's going out of style because you were you were raised up in a situation where money was spent like it was going out of style. Some of you wouldn't, when you walk, it squeaks because you're so tight. Because you were probably raised that way. So there's a lot of influences in our lives that when we get born again, we carry that stuff over into the kingdom. And the truth of the matter is, when we get saved, we no longer operate the way the world operates. We now are supposed to operate out of a kingdom of agenda. We're supposed to operate according to the Word of God. And so sometimes there's this balance that's hard to strike because of the way that we've always been raised and taught. And we have to learn what the kingdom says. And one of the principles in the kingdom is trust in the Lord with how much of your heart? All of it. Everything you got in you is supposed to trust God. You're not supposed to trust God half ways. You're not supposed to trust God part of the way. You're supposed to trust God all the way. Now when that means trust the Lord with all your heart, that doesn't mean that you can pick and choose what areas that you trust Him in. You're supposed to trust Him with every aspect of your life. 
You're here today and you're going through a struggle. You're going through a problem. Things are not the way that you'd hope that they'd be. Sometimes it's easy to look at that and say, well, I don't know why, well, how that's going to work out or what's going to happen. Even in those times, you're supposed to trust the Lord with all of your heart. The second part of this verse, it is very important, do not lean or rely on your own understanding. Now, we're guilty about doing this even after we're born again. We see a situation, whatever it might be, you name it. A situation on your job, situation in your family, in your finances, uh, in your life. You look at it and you, we all try to figure it out on our own. We're trying to rely on our own understanding. And God said, if you're going to completely trust me, you've got to quit relying on how you know how to handle things. You've got to give up the right to be in control. Now let me ask a question. Do I have anybody in this room that when they get in the passenger seat, they become an animal? Anybody? Jane? You know what I'm talking about? You'd rather just them drive than you allow them to put it, be in the passenger seat because when they get in the passenger seat, they fuss and holler and tell you how to drive. Do I got any backseat drivers? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, that's what we are. We're backseat drivers with God. Okay, God, I'm going to let you... We, you remember that famous song a, a few years ago, the country music song, Jesus Take the Wheel? Yeah. Jesus Take the Wheel, but let me tell you how to steer it. It's basically what happens with most of us. You know, you can take the wheel, but I'm going to tell you when to turn left and when to turn right. <laughs> And the truth of the matter is, when you get to this second part of this verse, do not rely on your own understanding, means that you're giving God the ability to turn left when you think He ought to turn right. See, the common sense thing for us may be for God to turn right. But faith says, I trust you even if you turn left. Because you see the bigger picture. That's what he's talking about. Right, turning right makes sense to me. Because if I turn right, then I know where everything's at. I know, what, I know how things are going to turn out. But God sees the big picture. That's why God is, that's why we trust God, because He sees beyond what we see. We can only see now and in the moment. And, and from our own experiences, turning right in our life may make sense. But God may take you on a completely different detour than what you think that you are to go on. And part of trusting Him is to say, okay, this doesn't make sense to me. I didn't ask for this. I don't want to go down this path. But I will trust you that if you're taking me down this path, that, that the end destination is going to be blessings for me and that you're going to take care of me. And He says, uh, so trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. I don't like the way this is written, so let me quote it from the way that I, the, the, the version I like. In all your ways acknowledge Him. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He will direct your path. One thing I have found true in my life, that when I allow God to have control, He always directs me to a place where I am blessed beyond anything I could think of imagine beforehand. But that means you have to give up control. And that's what trust is. Trust is giving up control of your life and saying, Okay, God, I've tried it my own way. I've tried to be in control. And I'm going to trust you that wherever you take me, you're going to bless me. And you're going to work it out for my good. And that you've got my best intentions in mind. And so that may mean that, that you go places that you would never thought before. And I can tell you in this journey of faith that we have taken as a family, that, that things that I thought should be one way and God works it out another, while we've had the things I look back on my life and say they were life experiences that I would have never had had I not learned to trust God. I remember when we started singing years and years ago. We started out with a JVC boom box and a Mr. Microphone. Anybody remember those Mr. Microphones? That's what we started out with. And we thought we was the hottest thing to hit the town, man. We were, we were just excited, didn't know nothing, couldn't sing, but we wanted to do for the Lord. And we weren't smart enough to know any different. We weren't smart enough to know that we couldn't sing, and we weren't smart enough not to know that we couldn't go places and sing. We just were excited about doing for the Lord. And it ended up being this journey of faith that God took us on that we didn't have any money, we didn't have any place to sing, and we just trusted God that He was going to open up the doors. And for the first year or so, we sang about five times that whole year. 
And then the next year, we sung a little bit more. So we went out, we bought a, uh, we bought, we moved up from a Mr. Uh, JVC Kaboom box to a Mr. Microphone, and we bought a piecemeal sound system from the pawn shop. And so, you know, this was one of these things that should have had an amplifier, but it didn't, and so it just sort of sounded sort of muffled like we were singing through a straw. <laughs> singing with the sun for the morning light. You know, so I won't, and, but, but God opened up more doors. And at the end of the journey, at the, by the time we had retired from doing that ministry, we had, done, we had gone from doing six dates a year to 150 dates a year all across the United States. We went from traveling in a van with two $20 signs on the side that said Redemption Quartet to uh, traveling in a bus with a $10,000 sound system. Now, we couldn't sing. But what we did do was we knew God had called us to do something and so we trusted Him that every step we took, He would open up the door. We didn't try to lean to our own understanding because our own understanding said, well, you can't sing, don't do this. Being intellectual doesn't always mean that you're operating in faith. Remember that. Simply because a guy goes to Bible college and gets him a seminary degree and he's smart and all that and he can quote scripture doesn't mean he's operating in faith. Faith is letting go of control and trusting God to take you to a destination that only He knows. Are you willing to let go of your life and let God trust, to trust God? And that's part of what you do when you get born again. You let go of your life. You die to yourself. It's what I call killing the me man. And a whole lot of us have to learn that issue. We have to learn to kill the me man. So many people are self-made people. They're working on their own ability. They're working on their own capability. And that's good as long as you're able to do that. But what do you do when things crumble apart in your life and your own abilities and your own capabilities are not able to fix what you're going through? And listen to me, everybody in this room, if you haven't faced it yet, you will face a situation where everything you know how to do and, and your capabilities won't be able to handle the situation in which you find yourself in. You're going to come to that place. And you're going to have to make the decision. Do you rely on what you know? Or do you trust God that He's going to take care of you? Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And the promise is that if I acknowledge God, He's going to do what? He's going to direct or put me on the right path. When we decided it was time to retire our singing ministry... God had called me to pastor a church. I didn't want to do it. Because we had gotten to the place where things were taking off. We had gotten a call. And see, this is how things work. It always puts you a dilemma, right? We had gotten a call from a, a, a promoter who wanted us to come into a studio and do a demo album that was going to be sent across the United States to all the Christian music radio stations. And he was going to promote us and we were going to leave our jobs and go do this full time. Now again, it's amazing. We couldn't sing. But that's what was standing before us. And at the same time, God was saying, you need to go preach. How do you walk away from something that looks really good? You've, we've worked 10 years for this. To get to the place where we were going to travel full time across the United States. Now when I talk about we traveled across the United States, we, would, we had a guy that drive the, drove the bus for us. He was retired and we would leave out on Friday evening, get on the bus, go to whatever state we were singing in. We would sing and then we would get back on the bus and sleep and we'd come back and be back in the Cynthia Walmart parking lot 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Just enough time to grab a shower and go to work. I'm talking about not being able to do that. Being able to travel, being played on the radio across the nation. That's what was before us. But God said, go preach. Didn't make sense. And I never forget that particular summer we had went to, we were in Myrtle Beach and I struggled. It was the most miserable vacation I'd ever had at Myrtle Beach. I struggled that whole week with what I was supposed to do. And it seemed like every time we got in the car to go somewhere, we'd go to go see something or go to a shopping mall or go where we was going, we'd turn the radio on and I, it, it always landed on Christian radio. And there would be some knucklehead preacher talking about trusting God. 
And I mean, it was all week long. Are you going to trust God? Are you going to let Him have your life? Are you going to do what He asked you to do? And it was just all week long this was going on. And so we left Myrtle Beach and we went over to Atlanta before we came home because I wanted to go see Charles Stanley preach in person. So we went over to Atlanta and then on that Sunday morning we got up and went to First Baptist Church of Atlanta. And guess what that knucklehead was talking about? Out of all Sundays that we were there, here he was talking about God's calling you to do something. Will you do what God asked you to do? And so finally as I got in the car... And we were heading back up I-75 out of Atlanta. I looked over to Pam and I said, you know what? I said, I need to make a phone call when I get back to the house. And she said, you're going to call the church and tell them you're going to take the pastoral position, aren't you? I looked over and I said, well, how'd you know that? Because we hadn't discussed it that week. She said, you big dummy. God told me 30 days ago we were going to go over and pastor that church. I've just been waiting on you to make up your hard head. Well, it, had to, it was not relying on my own understanding because my own understanding was here's an opportunity before us that sounds so good. We're going to be traveling the, the country and on the radio everywhere. People will know us. But maybe that was the problem. I was more worried about people knowing us than maybe I was about people knowing Him. So you come to places in your life that you're just going to have to say, you know what, God, I trust you. I trust you. And I look back after all those years later what we gave up. Now, the singing ministry was great, and I loved it because of this. You could sing and go home. You didn't have to do anything else. Sing and go home. But I look back now and realize that after I made that decision, years later, over 250 people got saved because I made the decision to trust God. You know, you have to come to the place in your life where you say, you know what, I've got, I've got to decide what, what young people, some of you young people are deciding your future now. And some of you all are, are deciding about where I'm going to college or where I'm going to take a job. And it, you know, it sounds good, but can I tell you something? In the midst of your decision making, have you ever stopped to ask God this question? What do you want with my life? You ever stop to ask that question? Because I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't. I didn't do that. I didn't ask God, what do you want with my life? I just decided that, you know what, I was sick of school. And so I'm not going to college. But back then you could get out of that. When we were coming up, you didn't have to go to college. You could get a job at, at a factory or somewhere like that. And so I made my decision, I'm sick of school. I'm doing my own thing. I'm going to get a job and I'm going to make money. I didn't stop to think, okay, God, what do you want for me? And could I submit to you today this, this idea that some of us are in jobs we hate because we didn't ask God, what am I supposed to do with my life? And here's the, here's the sad part about it is we get to a place where we make money and we think we can't get out of it because we got to have a certain amount of dollars and so we go to jobs we hate with people we don't like being around because we didn't stop and ask God, what do you want for my life? What do you want for me? What do you want to do with me? And could I tell you this? Since that time I have learned to trust God with my life and I can tell you that yes, I have struggles and yes, we have problems and yes, you see me go through pain. You see the situation with my back. But I want to tell you that my life is blessed. Not, as, not because I've got a, so much money in the bank. That stuff don't matter to me like it used to. Not because I'm pastoring a church of 50,000 people. I wouldn't want that headache. I'm blessed because I'm exactly where God wants me to be. And I would tell you this, that you'll never find peace in your life until you're exactly where God wants you to be. So I want to ask the question this morning. I want to ask you the question. Do you have peace in your... Don't raise your hand, but just think about this a minute. Do you have peace in your life? Do you have peace? The only way to get peace is to trust the Lord with all your heart. Some of you, without a shadow of a doubt, have gotten a raw deal in life. 
you've been through divorce, you've been through struggles, you've been through problems, whatever it might be, you've been hurt in church. Hey, listen, we all, uh, we all go through stuff. But it's not a matter of what happened then. It's a matter of what, where we're at right now and what we decide to do moving forward with the rest of our lives. Trust Him with all your heart. Can you believe this? I haven't even got to my notes yet. So I'm going to preach till about 3 o'clock this afternoon. That'd be okay? <laughs> in every situation, listen, in every situation, there's going to be things in life that you do not understand. And maybe you're sitting here today thinking, I don't know why this happened. I don't understand why this happened. Why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to have this struggle? Why did they have to do me this way? Why did I have to have somebody walk out and say they didn't love me anymore? Why did I have to be treated this way? This is at the times when you do not lean to your own understanding. It's trusting God. And only through the Word of God are you going to be able to understand that God's got a plan. God's got a plan for your life. Young people, God has got a plan for your life. Some of you may be thinking about, well, I want to go to college and, and get a degree when God may be saying that I want you to go and be a missionary. Some of you young men may be thinking, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to work and I'm going to make money when God might be saying, go preach my word. When I was 16 years old, God called me to preach. And you know what? I didn't want to be called a preacher boy. Who wanted to be called a preacher boy? I didn't. I, wanted to be, I didn't want to be a preacher. I wanted to be the lead singer in a rock band, Kiss. Who wants to be called a preacher boy? And for years, I battled with that. Well, you know, people are going to make fun of me if I'm going to be a preacher. And, 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 and after all, you know, uh, my pastor, uh, when I was a kid, pastored our church for 20 years. The first 15 years of his career, he made $0 passing our church. The last five years of his career there, he made $50. And so I just sort of figured that pastoring, I wasn't going to be able to eat if I pastored a church. And so I figured I would be able to eat really well if I was a rock star traveling the world. And so that's sort of, I got the, the rock star thing out of my system when I was traveling and singing in a gospel music quartet. It sort of was sort of the same thing. Not quite, but sort of the same thing. But I didn't want to be called a preacher boy. And I battled with that. Can I tell you that now, all these years later, I can tell you that it's, it's an honor to be called preacher. It's an honor. Because what I found is that I have a higher calling. I work for the boss of bosses. And it's something to be proud of, to be called preacher boy. So what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do from this day forward? What do you do? Maybe you're here and you haven't trusted Him like you should. You're trying to do your own thing, trying to figure out your own thing. Trust Him with all your heart. That means we've got to get beyond saying it and actually doing it. The book of James says, Don't be a hearer of the word only and thus deceive yourselves. Be a doer of the word. Start putting in the... God, I'm going to trust you. For some of you all, maybe God has called you to be saved today and you've put off trust in Him. Well, I don't know, preacher. I'm scared to get in front of people. I'm scared to make that decision. I'm scared, what if? What if I sin? What if I mess up? Well, honey, you're going to mess up. You get saved, you're still going to sin. You're still going to make mistakes. You're still going to fall short. For the Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Simply because you get born again doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. And if you look at Christian people who try to act like they're perfect, don't pay attention to them because they're putting on a front to begin with. We all make mistakes. Amen? Amen. The house that, that we lived at before we came over here, I, I was hanging a, uh, at the eve of the house, I was hanging a, an exterior light. Thank God ain't none of y'all was with me that day. Because I had to climb up the extension ladder to get to the eve of the, of the light. And every time I got to the top of the, the eve, of the, at the very top of the ladder to the eve, I'd have something, you know, a, a screwdriver or something, and it, darn sure the time I got to the top of that ladder, I kept everything I'd drop. I had to go back down the ladder, get what I dropped, go back up the ladder, try to do it again. Get up there and I dropped something else. I had to go back down the ladder, back up there. Well, let's just make a long story short. Thank God Pam and the kids weren't there. They had left to go somewhere. But I slung that light across the yard. I threw them tools across the yard. and We all 
fall short of the glory of God. You're going to have days you're going to do this better than others. But trust Him. Trust Him. Maybe you're here today and you need to join the church, but you've put off doing that. Trust Him today if He's calling you to do that. If He's calling you to do something with your life, trust Him. But I would ask you this morning, have you ever even considered the point of asking God, God, what do you want me to do? Some of you are here, got gray in your hair like I do. It's still not too late to ask God, okay, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do with what's left? You may be, in the, you may be retired and ready to, to enter the phase that, you know what, I'm going to kick up my feet. Okay, but instead of kicking up your feet, how about, okay, God, I'm done with the secular work. What do you want me to do for you? How can I make a difference in your kingdom? And that comes when we trust Him with all your heart. It's not always going to be written out black and white. I had a guy in church that if you didn't have stuff written on paper, he was the most difficult man to work with I ever, I ever met in my life. We had a work day one, one particular day at the church. This church was falling down. It hadn't had anything done to it since 1970. Now you walk in a building that's falling down and hadn't had nothing to do since 1970. You shouldn't have to walk too far to find something to do. And so we come in and have a work day. He, looks, he walks in with his tool bag in his hand and he looks at me and he says, where's the list? I said, what list? He said, the list of things that need to be done today. And I said, Hoss, look at this building. Just pick a corner and you can get something accomplished. He grabbed his tool bag, he went out of the church and he went home. He came back the next Sunday and I said, what happened to you? He said, I can't work without a list. Well, I got news for you folks. Not everything in your life is going to be drawn out in black and white. You're going to have things happen that are going to happen out of the blue, out of the ordinary. You're going to, how many of the rooms had a heart attack? Let me. You didn't plan that out, did you? You didn't read the paper that says, on Monday morning at, at 9 o'clock, you're going to have a heart attack. Not everything in life is written out. How many of you got cancer? Dealt with cancer. You didn't have a manual that said uh, when you're 35 years old, you're going to get a diagnosis of breast cancer. Things just happen. And so in this journey with God, not everything's going to be written out. And you're going to have to take some adventures. You're going to have to live on faith. You're going to have to have areas that you trust Him. But there's nothing better at the end of the day looking back at where God has brought you from. Knowing that I didn't get here because I was smart enough. I didn't get here because I was educated enough. I didn't get here because I was good enough. I got here because He is faithful. <coughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge Him. I would challenge you this morning as we have a word of invitation. You young people, do something that I didn't do. Ask God about your future. Yeah, you got your plans. Sure, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with having plans, but make sure they're what, they're what God wants. It may be the difference from living paycheck to paycheck and being blessed beyond anything you could think or imagine. A story was told of a famous person who wasn't famous at the time. He had started business after business after business. Several businesses and they all failed. They went bankrupt. And it went so bad in his life that he got depressed and ended up in a mental institution. And it was some Sunday afternoon or some Monday or something that somebody come in to visit this mental institution and sit down at a piano and begin to play Christian hymns. And it took this man back to the days of his childhood where he remembered going to church and listening and singing the hymns. And as he had climbed the ladder and tried to build businesses, he had gotten away from God and he had gotten away from what God had asked him to do. And he was living his life without God, wasn't going to church and wasn't praying, wasn't reading his Bible. And his life had come crashing down upon him. And now he finds himself in a mental institute, just about to lose his mind. And as he listened to the music, he realized 
how much he had lost, how much from the faith he had wandered. And over the next little bit, he committed his life to, to the Lord that he would begin to do what God asked him to do and begin to live for God again and begin to go to church again and begin to trust God again. And he did, and it turned his life around. He thought he'd try again in the, in the business world. He tried again in the business world, only this time it was different. He had God in his life. He was living for God. He was trying to do things the right way and for the Lord. And he became a mega success. As a matter of fact, had the guy's story ended in the mental institute, you would have never heard the name J.C. Penny. He changed his life once he trusted God. You may be successful right now, but you can go to a higher level if you commit your ways to God. Doesn't mean you have to give up your job. Doesn't mean that. You may be, the, you may be exactly where you're supposed to be in your employment. And God could use you there to make a difference in the kingdom. But are you willing to trust Him? Are you willing to trust Him with your life? Let's stand on our feet.